Episode 3. Written by Bev Doyle. The sneaky beggar. Who? Letter from Jeff, my ex. Not heard of email. This way he knows I'll open it. <sighs> Clever. Desperate more like. The crazy thing is, he obviously thinks I hate him. You did divorce him. Not the same thing. I didn't hate him. I just realised that I was somebody else. Someone who didn't want a man in her life. He didn't get the hint at divorce. <laughs> Bit late for begging letters. He knows that wouldn't work. He's saying that he's found some of my stuff in his garage. Do I want it sent on? Nice try, Jeff. Bit of a kick in the ego when your wife turns around and says that she's gay and wants a divorce. Well, it's not like it happens every day. Like you said, you don't hate him. Just don't love him either. Trouble is, men don't understand indifference. I think it's that thing between their legs. It's either on or it's off. Makes them terribly binary. What are you going to do? Save the stamp. It wasn't franked. The more pressing question is, what are you going to do? I'm going to get the bread delivery in before it gets wet. About Daisy? You still thinking about reporting her to the police? Thinking, yes. You don't care that she's my best friend's daughter? I said thinking, didn't I? Just remember, being vindictive isn't a good look, especially in a village like this. Well, looks better than killing another road user when you don't have a licence. Daisy? Yeah? That was the agency on the phone. They want me for a day's supply at a school in the city. Would you be all right without me today? Sure. More to the point. Oh, pass us that bag of change, would you please? More to the point. Will you be okay to keep an eye on Matt? I've written everything down for him. But I think the baker's rep coming today is really giving him the heebie-jeebies. Thanks for the vote of confidence. I think I can handle a couple of deliveries in a bun cellar. I know you can, love. That's what worries me. <laughs> Tell me if it's too hot. That's fine. Gotta say, Bev, that conditioner I put you onto is really working hard. Hardly a split end. Forget my split ends. What about this letter? Something and nothing. Just Jeff chancing his arm. I don't even think that deep down he really wants me back. Just can't get his head around the Chloe thing. Tell me about it. No, 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 this isn't right. Excuse me, Daisy. Are these all the rice flavours you have? This was supposed to be in with the returns, wasn't it? What flavour are we looking for? I've stacked the returns by the back door. Read your list. The Caribbean spice one. I'll just check out back. Thank you so much. Are you having a bad day, Matthew? What, me? No! Just, uh... Want to make things all tickety-boo? Most admirable. It's never good for things to get messy, as I'm only too aware. Samesh, too, I should imagine. Sorry? Not quite with you. Oh. So you've heard nothing, then? About what? What about you, Alan? You heard any interesting tittle-tattle? <laughs> Why ask me? Just because I run the pub doesn't mean to say I know everyone's doings. There was I thinking your little establishment was the centre of our community. <laughs> so... Nobody's heard anything, then. You sound disappointed. Oh, trust me. In this instance, I am not. What about Chloe? She can't be popping corks about Jeff getting in touch. Hard to tell. You know how laid back she is. Except for this thing with your Daisy. She's really got a grudge going there. Yeah. From what I've seen, even Donald Trump couldn't wind Chloe up. Wouldn't have thought a little accident would get her claws out. According to her, the crash might have been an accident, but the driving illegally was deliberate. Sounds like you don't completely buy it. Well... Anxious mother hanging here. It's just... I look at the life you've given Daisy. Solid, everything a kid could want to grow up in. Don't stop on my account. Well, it's been all the other way for Chloe. As far as we can tell. What's that supposed to mean? Nothing. Forget I said anything. If you say so. How's that looking? Fantastic. As ever. Anything else? Something for the weekend, sir. What? <laughs> Private joke, don't worry. Actually, there is something else you can do for me. 
If Alan asks after me, keep stum. Why would he ask me? Because he's being a Sherlock in the rear at the moment. And if I didn't warn you, you'd say something stupid about me having my hair done special. Don't I at least get to ask what you're up to? <laughs> Be serious, you and secrets. Google's more tight-lipped than you are, darling. Sorry, couldn't find any Caribbean flavour rice. No worry. I got what I really came for. But nobody said anything. I know. Right. Found what you need, Alan. Actually, I just wondered if Bev had been in. She missing an action? No, no. She said that she was off somewhere. Just wondered if she'd mentioned it to you. Oh, never mind. I don't suppose you've seen her about, have you, Evie? What am I, the village spy cam? Dad, it's no big mystery. She was having her hair done this morning. Right, of course. <laughs> what do you reckon? Well, come on, you're kidding me, bruv. That's a killer beat. No doubt, no doubt. Just... Yeah, yeah, I knew it. It's this flipping cartridge, man. It's mullered. I mean, do you know how much these cost? I thought it was all digital these days. Uh, you do know what the D stands for in DJ, don't you? <laughs> oh, man. I was really hoping to swing a gig at the festival this year. Yeah, good luck with that. I'll never save up enough in time. The plastic is maxed, and if I go to my old man, he'll want to know why. Maybe I can lend you some. <laughs> yeah, right. You still owe me money. Just as well I got this, then. Is that yours? Nope. It's ours. Right, pass my phone. Lewis! What is it, son? No. I can't give you a lift to the bank. I'm busy. None of your beeswax. I'm on my way to Logan's by the look of it. Oh, balls! Did I say that out loud? Nothing. Forget I said it. Just leave it, all right? <laughs> oh, I can't believe I still do that. How did you get through your training? Sweeping hair is just about all you ever do then. <sighs> Well, while we're quiet, I abide. <laughs> Already on it. See, we fit together so well. It's like we were made for each other. Apart from all those years growing up and being married, you mean? Look at you pulling rank. I can't tell, but if I'm a late developer. <laughs> exactly. So you don't have to catch me up. I know. But I feel... I don't know. I just feel that... Coming so late to the party, I need to do something. You are. Seriously. I just feel that I ought to get involved in the movement somehow. Pay my dues, I suppose. You make it sound like a union. Well, isn't it? I mean, that's why we have pride and affirmative action. They do, maybe. I just have sex. It just so happens with women. You seriously think that everyone out there looks at it as casually as you do? I don't give a flying fart what they think. I wish it was that easy. Look at it like this. If, I don't know, say, Ellen from the pub decided that he was never going to drink tea again... That'll be uh, the day. ...that he was only going to drink coffee from now on. Well, what about it? My point exactly. Are you saying that sex and hot drinks are the same thing? Well, thanks a bunch. I'm saying that they're both nobody's business but the drinker. Pity you can't be this relaxed about Daisy. Ugh, just drink up. How long you had it? A couple of days. Shouldn't you have handed it in? It was probably lost when the pub was open before lockdown. Maybe they didn't come back for it because it's not worth it. That funny money looks bogus to me. Like that stuff you see where a box full buys you a banana. Well, that's what I thought. But I checked online, and they're dirhams. Dirhams? It's the currency of the UAE. And judging from this membership card in here, this dude might have been a sheik or something. They all are, aren't they? Still looks like chump change to me. Look at what 8,500 dirhams gets you. Mm. A cartridge or two, wouldn't you say? Panicking isn't going to help. I'm not panicking, I'm searching. The recorded delivery stuff goes in the special bag, remember? Look at the stickers. What stickers? They're not labelled. Oh, because that was on your list, see? That bit got folded over. Ah, oh, brilliant. 
She's checking up on me. You answer it. Oh, I can't. Tell her everything's fine and I'm so bored that I made a star on that shelf she keeps nagging about. Hello? Tanny? No, no. All going according to plan. No, the good type of plan. Honest. That noise? Oh, we're getting everything sorted out for the pickup and... Oh, shouldn't that have had a bloody fragile sticker on it? You know, maybe we shouldn't go in. Money's not going to change itself, bro. Yeah, but it's a lot of money. These banks have got cameras, CCTV. Not even two grand. We're hardly in the money laundering league. I know, Lewis, but... Well, is it right? What, do you want a new cartridge? Only like oxygen. And do you think cheap butterfingers is bothered about losing what he probably spends in a night? But we don't know that. All I know is that I love you, man. Much more than I love him. So we're changing this money and getting you kitted out. I don't know, El. Something just seems off. But you didn't find it. It's not your decision to make. Found the Haynes manual, then I see. You what? <laughs> the flash electric car. Saw it was back in front of the old schoolhouse. So you must have fixed it. Yep, yep, job done. <laughs> Just don't expect us to fix your pet's hair dryer. Grease and oil is still our bread and butter for now. He must have been right cheesed off. <laughs> Paying out all that money just to see it in the garage within a couple of months. Well, he did get a bit heated about it. Takes the shine off bragging rights, though, I guess. Oh, I'm sure our Mr Madani has plenty of other stuff to brag about. Oh, yeah? Like what? Hold on, this sounds like Alan the Silverback talking. Village pub landlord. Professional curiosity about a new arrival in the village. What do you want to know? You already know where he lives. Yes, that fancy conversion job at the old schoolhouse. Thing is... I just saw Bev go in there. Oh, you're tailing your wife now. That really is green-eyed monster time, then. Wouldn't be the first time, would it? You're being paranoid. You think? She's been acting a bit weird recently. Well, haven't we all? So I was following her, but Lewis called me and I lost sight of her. I thought she was heading for Logan's place. Logan's your number one suspect. OK, OK. It seemed credible at the time. Then I spotted her going into that Madani's place. Are you really worried? You think I should be? Well, I couldn't say. Personally, I've never found myself going weak at the knees for a mysterious dark stranger with an expensive motor, a luxury apartment and an exotic line of business. Hmm. Might have been better if I'd married you, then. A story to restore your faith in human nature. Our local food bank has been the recipient of a generous and anonymous cash donation. Good God. That Year 3C could wear out an army of battery bunnies. And why is there always an Oscar? I didn't know teachers got them. By two o'clock, I was convinced he'd cloned himself. Where's Matt? He's got one of his heads. He just left you to finish up? Oh, it's OK. It most certainly is not. You've gone above and beyond babysitting him all day. It wasn't that bad. I heard how bad it was, remember? Go on. Oh, I'll cash up and do the PO stuff. No, really. That's an order. He really tried. And if you ask me, he really didn't look at his best. He's a husband. They're safer that way, trust me. <laughs> you won't give him a hard time, will you? I'll try my best. But I love him, so don't worry. I'll fail miserably. Please don't do this. I don't have a choice. We need the damage to the car fixed and the insurance won't pay up without an incident number. That can't be right. It's not like it was an assault. You weren't there. What if I'd have been a mother with a pushchair? But you were there, and I'm sure Daisy's learned her lesson. Don't you think the police will make sure it's learnt better than we can? You're just worried about upsetting Bev. I'm worried about you. What goes around comes around. Is that what you would have told that mother? This isn't about a fictional mother and baby. This is between you and Daisy. And just because unlike you, Daisy... Is a spoilt witch? This isn't finished. Evie! This is a surprise. May I come in? Of course. Come in. Can I get you a cup of anything? Oh, I'll not be staying long. I rather doubt you'll want me to. This is not a social call. It's business. Sorry? Believe me, I wouldn't be having this conversation if I could avoid it. But what with the Covid payments all stopped? Well, banks being banks, they're starting to claw it all back now. Did I miss something? Uh, didn't Sandra tell you? I'm your landlord. Are you talking about the back rent, Rio? I'm afraid so. 
It's nothing personal. Don't we have some agreement? Yes, you have a perfectly legal rental agreement. Which means you can throw us out, Chloe. Which means I am owed that back rent. I'm sorry, but if you were me, you'd have no choice either. So you're going to evict us? Oh, I'm sure it won't come to that, will it, ladies? I really am very sorry. Good evening. Well, the witches just keep on coming, don't they? <laughs> Greenborn, Episode 3, was written by Bev Doyle. Alan Godwin was John Altman. Beverly Godwin was Corinne Wicks. Evie Lejeune, Louise Jameson. Sam Sharma, Pal Aaron. Sandra Davis, Neve McGrady. Chloe Chan, Rebecca Yeo. Daisy Godwin, Lucy Fish. Tani Jefferson, Amy Roxon. Matt Jefferson, Ali Zane. Jeet Sharma, Shash Hira, Lewis Godwin, Finley Pyle, and the radio presenter was James Keane. Other roles were played by members of the cast. Greenborn was devised by Colin Brake, based on an original idea by Colin Brake and Andrew Mark Sewell. Greenborn FM Station Sound by DivaWeb. Original music, Tim Arnold. Sound design and post-production, Kirsty Gilmore. The studio manager was Wilfredo Acosta. Series producer was Helen Quigley, and the director, Andrew Mark Soon. Greenborn is a B7 media production made with the support of the Audio Content Fund. Visit Greenborn online at greenborn.co.uk.